What's up guys, it's Double Winning, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to learn from a game you win. I'm sure you guys have all heard the old saying, you learn more from losing than you do from winning, but that's not to say you can't learn from winning as well. There are different perks from analyzing a replay from whether you lost or whether you won. The most glaring one for analyzing a replay where you lost is, well, I lost doing this, so I probably shouldn't do that in the future. So what about replays where you won? Or even, what about replays where you stomped? Is there still things you can learn from that? Absolutely. Things you want to focus on when you're going over a replay where you won are ways you could have won harder, faster, better, and to quote Daft Punk, stronger. You just have to realize there's always more you can still learn. Even pro players, you know, like Faker, who go 10-0 in lane and then stomp the game and win in 20 minutes, I'm sure if they went over their replay with a nice coach or by themselves or anything like that, they could find out areas of improvement. And guess what? That's why they're so good is because they have this ability to scrutinize themselves and really find out ways they could have won harder, faster, better, and I'm saying it again, stronger. Okay, so I get it. We're not faker, we're not pro players, so where does this put us players that are in, you know, bronze, silver, gold, and even platinum? Well, honestly, going over replays where you lost is probably more beneficial to you. The reason for this is because at bronze, silver, gold, and even platinum, and heck, even diamond, most of the time you're losing games or you're doing poorly is because of mistakes you're making, as opposed to things you could have optimized to win harder. That's not to say you can't go over winning replays and learn from those either, though. It's just with those winning replays, you really have to look over the different things that you did that really accelerated the win, improved the win, or more secured your win. What I mean by this was, were you uh, zoning your lane opponent? Were you protecting your carry correctly? Were you diving and using your skills correctly? Were you communicating correctly? Were you warding? Were you buying the right items based off the situation? There are tons of things that you can note for yourself and be like, this is why I won this game. This is what helped me. So let me keep this more consistent with the games that I play in the future. Now going over games where you won can be a ton of fun, but sometimes you really have to be able to scrutinize yourself. Otherwise you're not gonna pull anything from that win. You really need to be able to look and be like, while that was good that I did that, how could I have done that better? And that's going to be the key to going over your replays where you won to really find out what you could have done better and so you can improve for the future. Now, I know there are some of you guys who are probably thinking, DW, going over replays, how is that supposed to be fun? Well, I'm going to point you to an old quote, and I don't even know if this quote is accurate. But it's an old Abraham Lincoln quote, and he said, Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. How does this relate to replays in League of Legends? Basically, if you grind out ten games of solo queue a day, you won't improve as fast as if you grind out three games a day, and after each game you go over the replay, and you try and learn from it, and then at the end of those three games, on your sep or I guess it would be your, your fourth game, you try and put into effect those things you learned. And I realize I haven't probably convinced you that going over replays is fun, but you just have to think about it from the perspective that are you gonna have more fun winning games and feeling like you're actually getting better at the game? If that's you, then going over replays is gonna be your best option. So I suggest trying it out, seeing if you can really learn from it um, before you just kind of scrap it. Another thing I wanted to touch base on was something I hear a lot from you guys, and that's about games where you just get this ridiculous score, and you talk about how the game was unwinnable, or your teammates were trolling, or how could I have possibly won this game, you know, when I went 10, 4, and 20. Those are games where you go over your replays, and you really scrutinize everything you could have done, and you have to fight every instinct in you to look at how bad your team played and instead only focus on things you could have done better in your own personal sense. What I mean by this is don't don't bail yourself out by saying, oh, well, you know, if my team would have went in here, this dive would have been perfect. Well, maybe that's something you can learn from. Did you communicate that dive correctly? If you didn't, maybe you could work on that. Or maybe you just need to work on, you know, risk assessment. If I dive this and my team joins me, there's a 100% chance of success. 
However, if my team doesn't join me, there's only a 20% chance of success. Judging from how this game has gone so far, what are the odds that my team is actually going to join me on this dive? Think about it that way, and you can really see how you could improve your gameplay from just focusing on yourself. Because in that situation, it doesn't matter if your team acts or doesn't act. You've made a conscious choice to decide, I'm going to dive with the chance that my team joins me, sure. And that's a 100% success rate. Or 99 or whatever. But I'm also taking into account there's a 20% chance my team doesn't join me and then I get crapped on. So, I'm not going to dive. Or, if it's a team that's really reacting well and you're communicating really well with, then you can dive because you communicated correctly and then you're going to dive on them and you're going to continue to snowball the game. Now, I know it seems a little extreme to be like, well, I have to think about all these things while I'm playing the game. Yes and no. These are things that initially when you're trying to improve and get better at, you do have to actively think about these things in-game. But as you get better at it, and as you get better at the game, these things will come more naturally to you, and you no longer will have to actively use your brain to think about these things. They'll just come to you naturally, and every once in a while you have to fix that rationale. But things like, think about it like when you first started playing the game. Think of how hard it was to farm if you had never played a MOBA before. And then if you focused on farming, you would actually farm pretty well. And now farming is more natural to you. Do you still think about farming? Do you still think, okay, so these minions are focusing this minion. So I have to attack this one, but I have to be ready because both these minions are at a medium health right now. And I don't want them both to be low health because I only have an auto attack that can kill one of them. And then the other one's going to get killed by a minion. You probably don't think about those things, but if you actually think about the process of it, it sounds a lot more complicated. So these are just things that you have to focus on when you first start, you know, putting into effect these things. But then later on, you'll kind of get them more naturally. So one last thing I wanted to touch on before uh, this video comes to a halt here is focus on one mistake at a time. What I mean by this is if you go over your replay and you notice, wow, I really stomped this game, but my farm sucked. Which actually in this game, if you look at the beginning of the game, I wasn't farming too well. I was getting kills, so the gold was saying pretty, you know, good. But I wasn't actually farming that well when I could have farmed well and killed by plenty of times. So if I spend my next three games focusing purely on making sure I get the most optimal farm, my farming is going to improve immensely, especially as Renekton if I played the next game three games as Renekton. So focus on one mistake at a time, grind out that mistake, and then move on to the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and check out these videos I've got on the screen now. And as always, guys, stay classy and keep winning.